The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. We are back talking Mets in the zone, Mets baseball, when it is at the top of its game. Marty Rose, Robert Cole, tell us why. Start with Marty. (laughs) Well, uh, as we were saying a few minutes ago before we went on the air, uh, this uh, the moves that have been made uh, over this uh, Thanksgiving weekend, I guess we can give thanks to this Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Cohn has outdone himself to this point. And uh, as I recall, when uh, he was first uh, being mentioned, about buying the team, I think a lot of owners were uh, a little apprehensive about that. And why? We're seeing why right now, because he, Mr. He's Cohen by has far a, the rich, richest large, guy in baseball. He has a large checkbook, <laughs> and he's making use of it. So. Okay. We also talked about the pitfalls of spending more than the the cap. Um, And we all agree that um, given our our lot in life, uh, if that comes back to haunt them five years from now, uh, we'll take it with four championships in a row. Um, Hopefully... Hold the phone with four championships in a row. Okay? <laughs> Wayne Unger joins us. Uh, as I introduced uh, at the top of the hour, there's only one guy who won't be as elated as we are. And I'm trying to point out the um, the pitfalls of spending an un, unmitigated amount of money although I've never really heard that expression, spend an unmitigated amount of money with Met ownership of any kind, <laughs> ever. This, this is, well, this is very true. But uh, I tell you what, uh, and Ralph, you and I discussed this. Uh, you know, to me, uh, I personally, you know, Escobar kind of kind of is like, ah, uh, uh, Marte was a great move, and uh, and I believe me, uh, you know I thought Scherzer was you know was a great move when you considered it. It's the short term. You did not sign a free agent that has a draft pick attached because that's critical for the Mets this year because they didn't sign Kumar Rocker last year. So besides having the 11th pick of the draft, they also have the 14th pick of the draft. And they would have had to surrender the 14th pick of the draft uh, had they signed a free agent that had compensation attached. So uh, do I, with Scherzer, do I think they're a better team today? Uh, now I think they're really a better team and uh, – you know, I don't well, see the. I don't see the other. I don't see other teams in their division improving. I think uh, Atlanta can, you know, can keep up, so to speak, with what they've done, is providing they re-sign Freeman. But uh, I don't see. Uh, I don't see much left. I don't see a lot for Philadelphia. Certainly, see nothing for Washington. And Miami's making some moves, but, uh, you know, they're not making any drastic moves. But watch out for Miami starting pitching, though. Go on. Hey, Robert, maybe you can tell us why uh, the Dodgers didn't win out on, was it by design, why they didn't win out on Scherzer? Well, some of the word coming out of Los Angeles and some of the sports writers were saying that the Dodgers picked him up as a rental last year with no intention 
of meeting the price tag. And, you know, apparently that was the case, although right till the last second until it was actually signed, sealed and delivered, I believed in my heart that at the last moment we were going to get our hearts broken again and sure as it was going to sign with the Dodgers. Hmm. Okay, I wonder, that, and, uh, I, I'm sorry, I was just going to say, adding to that, I wonder if they're also hedging against uh, Clayton Kershaw deciding to come back for another season. So, because if he does, and he does go back with the Dodgers, even though he hasn't performed like a $33 million pitcher or $31 million pitcher, he's still certainly going to get paid. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, it, yeah, uh, it's hard to say. Like I said, I thought in my heart of hearts that he was going back to the Dodgers. Now, I had some people also saying the Angels were in, and a lot of people thought he was going to go to the Angels. In other words, he was going to stay on the on the West Coast. So, you know. Might they be forced to pick up Roger Bauer's contract again because uh, of court circumstances? Um, and that's it. And that's some big bucks right there. You mean Trevor Bauer? Trevor Bauer, I'm sorry. There's a Roger oh, Bauer okay. on my Facebook. There's, there's, well, you better check to make sure he's alive tomorrow. I uh, really uh, have no vested interest but uh, to, until this <laughs> moment, but now I care about him more than ever. Prayers and thoughts. How about that? Because <laughs> Gentlemen, you I'll, tell you the, the, I'll tell you the story. Well, all right. I got I to gotta tell the story for the audience, to be fair. So some years ago, it had to be five, six years ago, we had Dan Zimborski on. And Ralph asked Dan Zimborski how he got into all these sabermetrics and analytics. And he said, you know, he, he, was, he read books about Ron Shandling. Uh, Ron Chandler, excuse me, Ron Chandler. Wow, and then, okay, and then, you can see how that happens. Yes, and then <laughs> later in the podcast, <laughs> Ralph called, referred to Chandler as Gary Shandling. And the next day, <laughs> Gary Shandling was dead. So anytime Ralph <laughs> screws up somebody's name, we're always, it, we're always saying prayers for the guy whose name, you know, he, he mentioned <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And especially, I don't think I've ever had a real conversation with Roger Bauer. How can I talk to his widow if, God forbid, anything happens? I'd have to fake it. You know, Roger was a wonderful guy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Although I had no vested interest, uh, oops. <laughs> rest in peace. And again, thoughts and prayers. That that's paramount. <laughs> Wayne, let me just make um, tell you about Cano, uh, not Cano. Uh, Canna. The Cano. 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 And Escobar. The two solid players. They fill Conforto's spot. They fill third base if necessary. They're what a team needs to win. The, the pieces, the solidness of the club, and they are so. We haven't talked to Lonzo, Lind, Lindor, um, decent catching. Uh, I'm thinking McCann will come back and have have a decent year. Or, Sure, I screwed that name up too, but um, <laughs> uh, you didn't I Chuck McCann, so you're all right. All Nimmo right, keeps yes. getting better right. too. Oh, Chuck McCann did did a great Three Stooges. I'll bet you guys will will all agree with that. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. And believe, it, believe go, it or not, Ralph, believe it or not, Ralph, I took accordion lessons from Chuck McCann's son. <laughs> wow. Whoa. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's uh, Talk about um, a claim to fame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that's going to go in your Wikipedia. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> top one, top one. All right, so um, I just but, wanted um, to 
tell Wayne that they not only got rich with two legitimate superstars this week, they put on some solidity, which will contribute to depth. And um, can't have too much of that. Now, I think Escobar Escobar is being talked about as being the steal of the winter. Many scouts saying that that was the best move that anybody's made so far. Whoa. Well, yeah. I, I, I tell you, I, I like, you know, they, they were, they were okay moves, but I kind of thought about like, okay, so now you, you spent $26 million a year. Uh, I'm think I was thinking, well, maybe you might've like tried to uh, see what Chris Bryant was asking, you know, Instead of getting those, they may two. not be done. They may not be done. Uh, I, read today I, don't think, I don't think they're adding a Chris Bryant contract at this point. I, I think their roster. Listen, I think their roster will be fine. The thing is, it's like Escobar. So who's who does Escobar? You know, who does Escobar take away at bats from? Uh, who does no take one. away at from? Da- Possibly Davis. Okay, Davis. And- Yes, possibly and McNeil. Davis and McNeil. Correct. Okay, so which makes them tradable? Well, uh, it does. Well, also, uh, actually, uh, Davis and uh, Davis McNeil and Dominic Smith actually all have minor league options uh, available as well. Just to point that out, but. Uh, you but, know, and you know, kind of takes away at bats. Well, they, I, I mean, I hope for the Mets' sake that the DH becomes universal because uh, you need to you need to keep Dominic Smith out of the outfield. He he was he was dreadful. So I, I tell you right there, putting kind of in uh, in left field as opposed to uh, Dominic Smith. Uh, oh, is, but, well, for sure. Okay, and you're going to have Marte yeah. in center. You're going to have Kana in right, and you're going to have Nimmo no, in left. No, you're going. To, it's going to be the other way around. No, it's not. No, Kana's no. a great right fielder. He's a super yeah. right fielder. I saw him a lot with Oakland. Well, and, I, and I, and I, like I, I say, I, I'm I, an expert know. on that because I told you how how good Lowry was. <laughs> so, so I must uh, listen, know something. I, I screwed up on Lowry way more than you you did. Okay, you talking no, about Jack not Lowry, on this right? show. <laughs> not yeah, not on this show. Uh, okay, so let me tell you. you remember a uh, couple. Remember when uh, the Yankees first signed uh, G, DJ Lemayhu? Yes. Yes. Well, that was also the winter that the Mets signed Jed Lowry. Correct. And when and I actually even before the Mets signed Lowry, I wanted the Yankees to sign Lowry, not Lemayhu. So talk about blowing it, uh, you know. Thank <laughs> God I wasn't the GM then, because but my thinking was I liked that Lowry one was a switch hitter, and but he actually hit good. Uh, he was a, you know he hit better as a lefty. So that was my thinking. But, uh, of course, now, and to be fair, uh, you know, the Mets medical staff struck once again. They, I mean, they actually refused to allow him to have an operation that he wanted to have that his own doctor advised on his leg. And sure enough, as soon as he was done with the Mets, he had the operation. He didn't have a terrible year last year. You know, he had no, a utility in field. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. so again, you know, kudos to the Mets medical staff once again, you know. Yeah, such as they are. And, you know, they've had in the last four or five years, they've had a complete turnover in their training and medical staff. Because we went through it with Pulsifer and those guys. Um, and, uh, and the Arno and the guys were getting hurt at an ungodly rate for two generations of medical staffs. So, and how do you choose them? I mean, um, fan has no, 
no input on that. You know, Where, where's Gus uh, Mock when you need him? Yeah, <laughs> right. You know what? Right. I, I think I think choosing uh, personnel like that is just as much a crapshoot as it is when you're drafting uh, a young a player or you're signing uh, an international free agent. I th- it's just a complete crapshoot. I mean, we have seen uh, successful managers, you know, they, you know, they go to another team, their contract expires for whatever, and they go to another team and they fall on their face. <clears throat> well, you me. said and the then, magic word, manager. Who's going to be the next met, met manager? All this done without any input from man from um from a manager who does he want to work with I don't know but that you got to think you got to think it just made the job more enticing Oh yes yeah. um who do you think Mar- Marty who's going to who's going to be the front runner Well if they go from to somebody outside the organization uh it could be that Brad Osmus that they were talking about uh he you know he managed for 5 years earlier and he knows uh uh Scherzer uh Scherzer knows him and, and he knows uh, the GM as well yeah you know, he 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 managed 5 years with uh, four with Detroit one with the Angels and you know he was 2 years over 500 and 3 years under but those teams weren't that good but uh, he's available and I haven't heard anybody else's name being called you know Nobody seems. I mean, mentioned. there's always there's always the usual speculation about Buck Walter. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what? I'm not I'll too rigid a guy. Oh. Too rigid a guy. Uh, um, it's, uh, it it uh, changed. The game's changed so much since he was with the Yankees, for instance. And you made a great great point on um, on one of the baseball sites. Wayne, he was chosen, Joe Walter was, by Gene Michael. Um, And if you want to go by guys whose opinion you would trust for um, choice of a manager, um, late Gene Michael was terrific. So, um, but I, I still think the game has passed him by too much. I, I, I disagree because his last job, you know, his last job was with Baltimore, and you know right. what? And and in the end, they they gave him some pretty shitty teams, and you know what? He wasn't a dick about it. He just pretty much, he's you know, his contract was up. It's like yeah, we we need to walk away and. You know, I mean, the, oh, Baltimore was terrible. They probably they probably figured, well, you know what? It doesn't pay to pay a premium, you know, a premium to a premium manager for such a shitty team. I don't know what their thinking was, but uh, I, I don't. I think he shed a lot of that uh, reputation. And remember, it only it only takes a minute to acquire a reputation, and it takes a lifetime to get rid of it. Uh, I think he would be good, but what's most important, okay, and it's not a matter of getting a manager who was, uh, you know, who who, who knows Scherzer, because Scherzer is signed. He's on the team. You want a manager who, you want some, if, if there's anybody who you want to appease and get excited on a team, you want to, you know, like one of the, a young talent, you want a guy like, like Pete Alonso would love to have Showalter, I'll bet, and I'll tell you why. Because Showalter is the is one of the few managers that would have the autonomy to manage the way he wanted to manage. In other words, okay, yeah, you want to give me this information, analytics department, sure, no problem. Let me take a look at it. But in other words, he's not going to take game plans. He's not going to take those you know, those written in-game instructions, so to speak, from an analytics department. He's going to manage the game uh, and write his lineup the way he sees fit, and and he's one of the few managers who who command that 
autonomy. And I think I that don't would think be, he'll be hired because of that. Exactly. Yeah, I and, agree. And, and that would be a, and, and unfortunately that would be a huge mistake. And not you only that, the, the Mets are, the, and the Mets are on such a roll. All right. So now that you know what, here's the other thing. Let's face it. They struck out, you know, publicly trying to trying to find a GM or a president. At first, they were looking to find a president, you know, in charge of baseball operations, and then they just settled on a GM. They struck out miserably on the big names, which I think I think is actually uh, a good thing for them. That's not what they needed. But I think if, if now if they bring in a show Walter after these free agent signings, I, I think that would, you know, that would be a, a boost for them in more ways than one. You laid out the very reason why show Walter will not be hired. The very reason, okay, is that he would demand autonomy. He would not listen to analytics. The Mets have spent a lot of money on an analytics department in the last couple of years. Okay, he, they're not going to change that now. Colin, oh, no, I, yeah, I didn't say he wouldn't to listen. Analyze. Yeah, the very you made a very strong case of exactly the reason why no. he will not be there. No, no, I see. All right, but to, just to clarify, I didn't say he wouldn't listen. I, I said. But he wouldn't. They, he wouldn't. Be, let me let me rephrase it. He wouldn't be a puppet. You know, I mean, any manager who doesn't take information from their analytics department is a fool. But he wouldn't be. He wouldn't be have to be a puppet. Like he wouldn't be Aaron Boone, so to speak. Well, and, right. okay. There's a, there's a guy in Tampa Bay that you would call a puppet, and he's been doing very well. So I mean, you know, there's two different. Uh, Two different ways to look at that. You know, a, a lot has yeah. to do. You know, you know what? Because his analytics department also uh, does a much better job at identifying players. I was talking with, with my younger son the other day, and and uh, it was like, did you ever notice that just about every pitcher that gets traded, you know, to uh, to Tampa does well. I go, did you ever wonder why that was? Because, like, the, I, was, I was looking at something and the light bulb goes off. Every pitcher improves, or just about every pitcher improves when they go to Tampa is because Tampa takes defense seriously. So that's, you know, I mean, that's part of it. That's part of it. Right. Well, you have to say the Mets are strong defensively now. Stronger, uh, stronger, yes. They're stronger. I wouldn't call them. I wouldn't call them strong. I mean, Marte, Marte is an upgrade, and getting Nimmo out of center, he played better last year. But that had more to do with the way they positioned him than anything else. Uh, you know, whether you McNeil, you know, let's just say, you know, Don Smith and J.D. Davis in left field, they'll have Nimmo in left. They'll have more well, wait, but Davis, Davis played. Davis also played third base. So, well, uh, you could sort of say you could say he's at third base, but I wouldn't say he plays third base. He's a lousy third base. He said he also played third base. <laughs> he tries. You know, hey, listen. They, you know, has anybody? <laughs> did anybody watch Escobar last year play? Yes. Nope. I, I mean, I actually, yes. I actually caught him a lot when he was with Arizona because you know, you, you know, you, you tune through. You know, that's usually when I watch baseball the most. Actually, I, wa- I watched a lot of West Coast baseball l- last year just because of schedule and because I was, you know, I would go down downstairs late at night and work out and, and have the ball games on. Escobar uh, was not the greatest looking fielder last year. He okay. was much better than J.D. Davis. We could all attest to that. This uh, guy was. A... I, I'm sorry. I I wouldn't attest to that. He was. He he was not the. He was not even like. I wouldn't even call him solid average. Okay. I, I'm I'm sorry. I disagree. And I watched okay. him. I watched him call, quite a what bit. What would you call J.D. Davis then? He's he's fair. He's fair. He's just fair. No, he's below average. J.D. Davis is 
definitely below average. Well, the affair is affair is below average. In other words, you're, to me, I look at it as you're poor, you're fair, you're average, you're above average, you're excellent. You know. Okay, he's an upgrade. <laughs> let me let me tell you, that's well, all. Well, if, uh, if if we don't have last year's Escobar, he's an upgrade. But uh, right. and that's not to say JD Davis. In other words, like he's not like a defensive. He, it's not like oh my god, we just got a solid glove at third, and you still and so at second base, who do you have? You have McNeil or Cano. Uh, neither are. A, or even average second baseman. You might you you might end up using Cano as a DH. Uh, okay, you might, and I mean, of course, and that's if, but you know, that's if you don't want to use the spot for Dominic Smith if if he stays with the team. If he, that's a big if too. But but these are nice problems to have. I think as Met fans. Just as Met fans, we could all agree. I know they are problems, logistical problems. But uh, Wayne, I got to tell you, in the five days previous to this, as I was telling Murd off the air, I was going to take the Met shit down off the wall. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I, I was tired of looking at it, and. Tally says, are you going to get a divorce for, from the Mets yet? <laughs> so, uh, listen, I said, no, the just Mets, a separation. The, I, you, know, and, you know what it is? Uh, the, Mets, the Mets have certainly improved themselves. You know, I mean, and the big improvement was Scherzer and Marte. Really, that was like, that was 75% of, of the improvement. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Okay? Of course, you and get maybe two superstars. But, but I can tell you from being a Yankees fan, is, you know, and, and the Mets are my number two, but being a Yankees fan, I can tell you that the season is not won in the wintertime. And so, you know, they definitely improved themselves. Uh, you know, they, mm. they need to find a lefty for the bullpen. Uh, you know, I, I, other than that, I, I think they can kind of go into the season constructed the way they are and, and definitely be, uh, you know, on paper, they should be a contender. Uh, a lot well, I'm, I'll make you feel good, of, gregarious. I'm a Yankee fan, too, too reverse that, a Met fan, and I, I'm having, having a whole bunch of um, apologetic Yankee feelings these last few years, Gregarious is supposedly available and may come back to the Yankees, I heard rumored. And that would solidify them. Maybe. I mean, uh, by the way, it's Gregarious. Gregarious. I am a Gregarious gentleman. You're a Gregarious gentleman. Gregarious is a shortstop. And you're also gregarious and gorgeous or whatever. But I'm not, I think the odds are out that I will not pronounce a ball player's name correctly for the entire season. And the early odds, but uh, there's a good possibility. So, um, Especially if it has more than three syllables. Oh, God forbid. <laughs> God forbid. And I'm getting some sort of acclaim. I am the only super senior at Newtown High School who ever wrote a book. And probably whoever read a book, if you if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a uh, second. Mer, Mertz read a book or two. Come on in. But he no, wasn't a super, super senior, senior. Yeah, in uh, other words, a super senior is someone who got left back in senior year. Ah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I had, had to go. I had to sit in gym class and, and take shop just to graduate. Um, oh, oh fifth, you're a fifth year senior. Okay, I got it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, he, was, he was a red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, uh, if I hadn't written on my hand on a few 
key exams, I'd still be the fuck there. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd write an encyclopedia on my on my hand and and read it if they ever had a test. All right, but, uh, hey, Ralph, by the, Ralph, by the way, your Giants are on the verge of signing Alex Cobb. Uh, he sounds excited. Oh, I I can't t- tell you how I, I feel about that, but um, <laughs> I think they may end up getting Bryant back, and Bryant is still a long shot, but he's my prediction for a long shot. Wouldn't it be nice to sign him as well? And wouldn't that give them some real depth, which we see every team needs. The injuries aren't going to go away. Um, So, but we're all three feeling good about the Mets. And thank you for your objectivity, Wayne. Appreciate that. Oh, no problem. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm giddy. I'm giddy with my, uh, the Yankees free agent signings. I, my, I think Wyatt said that they signed Jose Peraza today. Okay. You know. Yeah, um, it, <laughs> it's going a little slower. <laughs> going a little slower for them. Well, Great show, well, guys. You, okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh. I was going to say, Wayne, I'm hearing that the Yankees are interested in Cedric Mullen to play center field. You well, know what? Uh, you know, I tell you, I, well, I hear the Yankees, you know, the, the Yankees, I hear, uh, I hear they're in, they're in on a lot of people. Again, so Cedric Mullen, I don't even think the guy's eligible for arbitration. I'm just no, curious. What are they giving up? What what how what are they giving up to get him? It's not even a matter of taking money off their hands. Like it just what what can you know? Well, you uh, you you've got several you know pieces that they could move. I mean, I'm surprised they released a couple of guys who they probably could have used in trades. So uh, uh, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know uh, how much value Clint Frazier had at the time that they released him because, uh, you know, he still wasn't clear to play as far as the concussions go. Uh, so Tyler Wade, I didn't think would have had a heck of a lot of value, but he had a little bit of value and they, they did, they, you know, they traded him. Uh, and who was the third guy they just released? It was, uh, Oh, Come on, Robert. You're a Yankee fan. You got to help me. Well, that sh- that shortstop um, that they got from no, the me- or they there was a shortstop that went to the Angels from the That's Yankees. That's Tyler Wade. That's Tyler Wade. Yes. No, I mean, no, no. A Spanish, a Spanish guy. Oh, it, was it Velasquez? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you know what? I mean, and here's here's another thing, and. And, and Ralph, when you and I were talking, we were talking about this the other day. When you were talking about Mets being the Jewish boy from Long Island, oh, that's great for the Mets fans. It was just, you know what? It was, it really was a lot of overhype, and uh, and it's the same thing with Velasquez. He was an average fielding shortstop. He couldn't hit. He had a couple, you know. It, he was a great story because he he grew up in the Bronx. And here he was, he's like 26, 27 years old, may, finally makes it to the majors, he's playing for the Yankees. But like, you know what, he, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't there, you know, there, an answer for anything. He was just a, 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 a depth piece, very, very far down the depth path, the depth path. Uh, they do have, they do have, uh, a young, you know, they have two young shortstops. Peraza is yeah. the one that's. So I mean, they can, you know, I mean, so all right, Robert, you're a Yankee fan. Would you, uh, would you make a deal with the Angels to say give them? Would you give them Peraza and Jason Dominguez for Cedric Mullen? And of course, you probably got to give them more as well. But would you, would you give up those two? Yeah. Well, yeah, if you can get John Means as well. No, I would I forget about getting John Means as well. I would do it for Cedric for just. I would give up those two for Cedric Mullen. 
Yeah, well, I wouldn't. But I, I think I think it would be a bigger package, and I think the because the Yankees are running out of options for starters. You know, I mean, who's going to be the number two starter? They don't even know that yet, really. So, mm-hmm. as far as shortstop goes, I f- have a feeling they may go after Andrew Dill Sim. Uh, Angleton Simmons. Right, Angleton Simmons, who is an excellent fielder. Not much with the stick, but, I mean, right now they're looking for a stopgap to play shortstop. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Simmons normally hit around 270, 280 with a very low strikeout. I believe he's a switch hitter, and he can bunt. So, to me, if he can go back to being a 270 hitter, 280 hitter and only striking out 40 times a year and being able to bunt. To me, that's the guy you want to stick in the number two spot. I've always been a believer that you want, you, that's the kind of guy you want in the number two spot. I mean, look at, uh, you know, when Derek Jeter, there was a, for a long time, he batted in the number two spot. And you remember when Derek Jeter, even as a 300 hitter, would lay down a bunt? You know, uh, Willie Randolph, another guy, great number two hitter, you know, for years. Uh, I mean. Game is just, changing. You're not going to see that much of that anymore. Well, I, I mean, but I, don't see, but I don't see, I don't see the improvement there. In other words, like, you know, you want, I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they, the game does, you know, the analytic, the analytic people do not believe in the bunt, but that's okay. So what's wrong with, you know, a little slap hit the other way or, or at least getting the ball on the ground the other way and, and you know, make, make the defense play. I, I hear, you know, a lot of people that are into those three absolute outcomes, they're like, Oh, no, no, no. You don't want somebody just putting the ball in play. Bad things can happen, you know, and they're, and they're meaning toward the offensive side. And I'm like, no, that's just it. Yeah, you, bad things can happen because the defense has to play the ball. Correct. Uh, go back to the 2000 and was it the 2015 World Series? Do you know that the scouting report on the Mets were – if you make them throw the ball around, you'll, you'll, they'll end up making errors. And remember how aggressive Kansas City yep. was on the base pass? Yep. yep. That, that yep. was it. Yep. You know, make, make them play the ball. Oh, you know, I mean, bad things can happen. So, but I know in some ways I embrace the analytics and in other ways I am a total dinosaur. Right, and there should be a combination. And by rights, a guy like Phil Walter should get a job. But like Bert agrees, ain't going to happen because of that. And that's, it's like catch-22. What, what's wrong with this game? Well, that's what's wrong with this game. Can we face it? No, we can't because of what's wrong with the game. But that's for another show. This is an upbeat show. Thank you for joining us, Wayne. Welcome, Cole, Marty Rose, Ralph Tycho, in celebration mode. Thanks for listening, everybody. New York, and let's go, guys. Adios. Happy trails, everybody. Have a good night, everybody. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.